welcome everybody. And uh, back in to uh, what are we doing over the next six weeks? And what does that look like? And how is that going to sort of uh, reveal itself? So if you uh, go into the Discord server, uh, there is a, a, a little a link in there that says schedule. So you can click on the schedule and I'm just gonna kind of go over the schedule uh, with you here as, as soon as it pops up. <laughs> yeah. Gentry, I don't see where to find the schedule. Okay, if you go into the Discord server and yeah. you'll see on the left panel, you'll see a bunch of different little uh, line items and one of them says schedule. I think we don't have that if we don't have permission yet. Oh, that's okay. We've also posted in the chat here. So, you know what I mean? Because we, we are working on giving everybody permission or we've given everybody permission and Discord hasn't updated it, but um, it's in the chat now. It's a Google spreadsheet. Oh. It's also been in multiple emails, at least one of your last five emails as well. But it's, it's right here for everybody to access. Awesome. Thank All right, thank you, John. So, Everybody seems to have gotten, uh, let's see here. Everybody seems to have gotten some of the uh, modules yesterday. Today is obviously our kickoff. <clears throat> and so next week, what we're gonna do is do our creator update call. That's on the seventh. Then on the ninth, we'll do a crypto art marketing and mastermind. Uh, so we'll figure out what are we gonna do to sell our art and how to market it, which is gonna be exciting. Uh, on the 10th, we have a very exciting uh, session uh, with Brooke and Mindbender. Very excited about that. Um, and then week two, we have a creator update call. And that's going to be on the 14th. So just, you know, I mean, the, I'm just reading you guys the calendar. You can read it yourself. You know, you're smart people. But the 16th, the 23rd, and the 21st, we've got um really a, a amazing events happening um with the embodiment and uh, another creator update call also we'll be updating all of the virtual reality and bringing all that together on the 24th and then the fourth week we'll have another call on the 28th where we'll be doing another art marketing mastermind doesn't that sound fun? Yay. All right. And then on the 30th, the blockchain NFT. Week five on 7.5, we have the creator update call. And then on 7.15, we have final art submissions. And then on the 20th, we have um, nominations of art for everyone. And then on the 25th, uh, we're going to be at Ephemeral. So I just want to let you all know that you're invited to Ephemeral as artists and creators. Uh, we'd love to have you there because, frankly, having the artist with the art helps sell the art. So being an art gallery guy, just that's kind of like marketing 101, selling art. So if you're there, that's great. You're invited. That's our schedule. If you have any questions, let me know. There's things that are obviously subject to change, but that's where we're at. And uh, now turn it over to John. Thank you guys so much. Very excited. John. Thanks, G. And sorry again about bumping everybody off and, and, and having this scurry like this. But if anybody you know was bumped off, please let them know the recordings will be in the Discord channels and will be easily accessible for anybody who, who chooses to be part of this. So one of the things we, we want to make clear about the schedule before we move on to the next step is that um, team building, and we, we had sent an email, will be done by July, by June 15th. And Gentry was adamant that it's Mercury retrograde and we shouldn't sign any contracts in Mercury retrograde. So since we're currently experiencing a Mercury retrograde breakdown of a, of a Zoom meeting, you know, we're going to push that back to June 23rd will be the last day will be the day with which we have all signed so so right now anyone can join the discord anyone can join and watch our videos um 
once we finalize the container by finalizing teams and having button down agreements, then we're going to have a little bit more uh, in inclusive feel, look and feel. But in the meantime, this is gig exploratory. People are figuring this out. You know what I mean? We're figuring out the communications element. So forgive us for that. And uh, in the process, hopefully we'll be able to create some innovative artwork and then make huge impact. So that said, does anybody want to sketch their vision briefly? Anything they've got top of mind, you know, in the format with which we're doing it. The reason why I want to do it in a somewhat similar format, I know you're artists and some of you don't like conformity and my heart really it gets bigger for nonconformists. I do. I, I happen to be one myself. But um, the, the reason why we're trying to create a format that somewhat standardized to make it easier for people to join teams, for people to choose and decide which team to be on. So we've got a sketch revision process that'll be done on a Google Doc, which will have templates up on Discord, you know, by this time tomorrow. Um, we copy the the, the does it, um, it, hopefully everybody realizes Google Docs, Discord, and Zoom are essential for this for this incubator. You can't really get a wrong get get around any of those, and we apologize for that. But it just makes it much more seamless these these tools when they are working appropriately. So um, you, we're going to have these templates in Google Docs. You'll sketch your vision, and then you're going to plop in the sketch your vision channel of Discord when you when Discord finally catches up with everything that's going on. Um, you're going to post your vision there with four bullet points to build your team. It's going to be very clear. The sketch vision process we're about to do, and then you're going to say your title, yeah, what impact you want to make, um, who you need for roles, and what their percentage cut will be, as well as how much time commitment do you think it'll be between now and July 15th to execute. So well, since we have done this 27 times before, we find that it's like a heuristic. You know, we, if you simplify communication in a way that makes it easily digestible, you can you can recruit people much more easily. And then within our template is a little blurb about Regen FT for you to be able to spread it to your network, and you don't have to be the person who understands Regen FT to communicate it. Um, we we've we've got that already cookie cutter for you to communicate to your your people and your folks. And the number one thing here is it's free to learn a peer to peer new skill and we potentially make money on the sale of the artwork on the back end. So nobody here get, has to pay anything out of pocket until we mint the NFTs. And that's to go into, you know, some things we'll have to discuss. I'll create an NFT marketplace channel, but one of the things Chip had mentioned, no Ethereum, and I know that some people in the environmental world are against Ethereum. It might come down to an economics decision. Ethereum is excruciatingly expensive to mint an art piece as an NFT. Back at the peak of the market, it was like 180 bucks to mint one NFT. And so that would be, you know, something that the creative team would have to um, fork up, you know, I mean, as, as an expense. So there may be non, there are non, non Ethereum based NFT marketplaces that are far cheaper, but it comes with the trade off. They might not have as, as seamless of an architecture for the buyer. And therefore, we may lose out on the upside of some, some of this you know, crypto whale wealth that exists that we're looking to hunt down. So these are continued conversations that no person has control over. We're gonna completely do polls. This is a peer-to-peer -peer collective consciousness experience and we're gonna figure it out together and have fun in the process. So that said, was anybody interested in sketching their vision? Let me check the chat. Um, and if not, I have an example I can go through. I sent it to you while waiting, but thank you. Hey, Misha here. I can share mine. Um, cool. I'm in the car right now, so the service may come in and out. So hopefully I'll be able to deliver it. Uh, but basically, so I've been doing like uh, kind of like independent homeless support for the last. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just pulling up the schedule. Right, yeah. page, so. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I've been there. doing like independent homeless support for the last decade. Um, and I guess the idea is I, I would like to contribute to the transformation of the homeless support system. Uh, the idea is to just take a do make a documentary, kind of like uh, there's this one personality that I want to center it around in Las Vegas, uh, just kind of capture him walking with his dogs and kind of his story, and then um, kind of like interspliced with stories of others and just kind of like capturing, um, you know, people's journeys. Um, 
with their situations as well as you know people talking from the administrative side and from like kind of like the organizational side about you know where things stand and like what the roadblocks might be and seeing that as a potential genesis for like creating new systems awesome so i'm hearing the social problem context the sketch of the artwork is going to be a, is it's going to be a film a short film yeah it would be a short short documentary um so are you going to be the producer the director the actor uh, yeah, I would, I would be creating the documentary. So I guess producer and director. I'm probably a filmographer. Yeah. Um, potential impacts for this for this piece on Vegas, like in in a rosy situation, you raise a million bucks through this NFT by selling well, it. Well, you know, the broader vision is I like I like. Flat out, would just like to uh, transform the homeless support system within within this country and beyond. So I have a concept around uh, kind of like creating a citizen response um, workshop and training where people are kind of like coached through ways to like engage with their local like homeless population and um, uh, provided a toolkit, basically the toolkit that social workers already have of like how to patch them through to resources. And then from there, I see us potentially um, filling the gaps of the current system through kind of like that citizen response and feedback. Okay. And then what do you need as, a, uh, as team members? You know, I mean, if you think about the roles we have, we have the visionary, which is you in this case, Misha. And then we have, do you need art direction? Do you need, um, you know, a pollinator in the homeless community or the house? Yeah, community? Uh, literally anyone who resonates in whatever way they resonate to contribute. Like right now, it's pretty much team of one. So I hear maybe you one or two. So yeah. You, yep. you mind if I just zone in a little bit, just having done this 27 sure times? Thing. Yep, yep. So when we ask for anyone or anything, it's hard to get, you know what I mean? When we ask for specificity, we have the opportunity of getting exactly what we need. So there's definitely going to be room at the end, I think, if you ask for like two or three specific roles to be filled, because everybody here has come through this process with a role that they can fill in their own mind. If you speak their language of like, hey, I need a business person, I need a pollinator. There's business people and pollinators looking for teams right now. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe like um, people in the Vegas area that would be interested in participating in the creation of this documentary. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, what would exactly would maybe they be some, doing? maybe some, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like maybe some seed funding for kind of like a pilot project for testing this uh, training out and, uh, this training and the uh, toolkit so, within a yeah, certain yeah. area. I love, I love what you're yep. thinking about. We're yep. hoping with this with, so the region FC auction is, is, is going to be the place where seed funding arises for right. some of the people here not every can't promise every piece will sell of course but so if your team is a business person with connections to um documentary investors or social impact based content creators you know in, in that world if you could think about you know like because we're hoping that if you complete even if it's a sizzle reel that you create as the nft um for this by july 15th um, we're hoping that that sizzle reel you'll be able to sell as an NFT and and obtain some level of seed funding. That's the the kind of hack we're going with here. Got it. So, so you know what I'm saying? Like hey, this is good. This is a good start. You know, um, the social problem context. Just so everybody who is here, you went a little quick. So just to give them an understanding of the process. You just kind of talk a little bit about the social social problem you're trying to attack with your artwork or if attack isn't the language you like, that's okay, fill in the like, whatever language fills your heart and soul. Um, then you sketch your artwork out a little bit. You know, I'd ask you, Misha, to talk a little bit more for yourself at a later point in time, you don't have to do it right now, about what the documentary look and feel would look like, what the length and time would be, all for the July 15th deadline. You know, not if you're trying to do a longer piece post July 15th, this sketch your vision for Regen FT is for the set six week container. 
So we're going to have your team members signed on by between now and June 23rd, a contract inked that if you do make a million bucks in this NFT, exactly who's getting what and where and when and how. So everyone feels relaxed and ready to take action with you. And then with that container, go out and execute. So we're trying to help you, you know, tighten it up a little bit to, 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 to build your team. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah, if there's guidelines for this, I haven't looked at the emails and stuff, but I'm glad to take a look and proceed as directed. Perfect. Yeah. So, so if if I could go back a little bit to the team, you know what I mean? Because I think this is this is where you have, you know, maybe 20 people on the call now, but you had you had quite a few people on the call earlier. Um, it, it's set in the roles that we have. We have the visionary, which is you, the business person, the designer, the pollinator, which is like the activist connector and the technician if you need any coding done i don't think you need any coding done with yours so i'm going to remove the technician between the pollinator the uh designer slash artist or the business person which two of those roles would be most essential for your success in executing this deliverable by by um july 15th you're on mute misha i'm not sure if you're in a in your car somewhere different. Yeah, um, between uh, what roles again? So the roles are the business person, yep. the designer, and the pollinator. Okay. Are the three roles that I think are best for you. We also have a technician slash software engineer, but they're more <laughs> for like Brooks kind of stuff where you're doing VR and, and you need someone to actually code it. Um, okay. so yours, for documentary film, I don't see that being needed, but you might need a film editor that could be the technician. So you're asking me which two roles are the primary? Yeah, which between now and the, between now and the fifteenth uh, would be maybe the act. As I'm looking at this, I would say maybe the activist and the pollinator. Is that the, wait? Is that one and the same, or that's the one and the same, right? So the pollinator definitely. I'm allowed to do there. Yeah. Do you, do you need? Could you also edit the doc, the 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 film yourself? Like, uh, no, editing would be nice. I mean, it's like I'm gonna do what I can myself, and the, it's like uh, if people step in, that's great. Like I would love to hand off editing, but yeah. So yeah, for me, what I see as possible is we can sketch out the social problem context a little better. I'll just Google spread this Google document in a in a short period of time. And ask you to like hone in a little bit on the homeless problem specifically in Las Vegas, and the, specifically the issue that you're seeing there. And then the artwork, which will maybe done a little bit, you know, a short documentary produced by you. Uh, you're gonna walk, you're gonna follow this person in the street, you're gonna catch little snippets of this individual in different places. And then the impact you, you're looking to have is to transform the homeless support system around, around Las Vegas. And Globally. Yeah. Globally. Globally, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing a Las Vegas-based film with global-based impact. That's just where I am right now, but yeah, globally. Yep. Love that, okay. So, and then and then we'll, we'll walk through the, uh, like, do you mind if, if we flesh this out together and, and use our emails as an example for the entire community? So they see uh, your vision kind of get a little bit more robust for them to understand the process together absolutely thank you you're welcome and yeah, thank you for stepping up and saying yes to this okay yeah, thank you so so we hope that you know within the next 24 hours you'll feel confident that you are <laughs> sketch your vision which really shouldn't be more than a half hour of time you know this right. is not we're not looking to create a business plan here we're looking to create a, a lean kind of canvas for your yeah. artwork. And you can put look and feel elements in it as well. Actually, I'll put that in there. I don't think I have, no. And then team, I'll put look and feel here as well. And I'll have this available for others. How would you like a film to look and feel? Do you want it to look and feel like any particular documentary you're used to well 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 this one character i met him like two weeks ago and he's very like enigmatic it was like as he was passing us by and we we're sitting at this bar it was like what's going on right now and this gentleman um he was pushing a cart 
with three dogs on it. Um, one of the dogs, they were just sitting still, uh, poised. Uh, one of the dogs had a cigarette in its mouth, and he was wearing a helmet with a telescope on it. And he was just kind of like walking down the street, like out of a painting. And um, so it was just like, I, it would just be literally, I, I think it would be a good, a good way to go would be like him kind of almost leading the narrative and just like, yeah, walking th through the street, like exploring his life, maybe having some potentially interactions with other people like in the space or affected by the situation. And, um, but also along with that, I would like to like clip in other people and sharing their stories as well as other people working within the field and like uh, discussing like challenges within the space. So then the finished product is basically going to be, um, is it going to be a sizzle reel for a, for a larger documentary? Or is it going to be a sizzle um, reel for a short documentary? Or what do you think? I'm not sure. Uh, potentially, yeah, potentially for a larger documentary because um, what I'm seeing possible is um, uh, like a true exploration, kind of like really dissecting the issue from the core, from the ground level to like through all the levels. Uh, and then like using that kind of like, full spectrum analysis in order to create tangible solutions. So yeah, potentially as a, as a kind of a launch pad for a broader documentary, as well as, um, as well as like the creation of the project and training for the citizen response uh, training and toolkit, which would happen uh, ideally, probably a pilot project in one location and then um, every major city and then from there. So the citizen response toolkit it happens to be the thing you're going to donate your money to. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, no. It's, well, saying, the no? idea is like we all can help, right? We all like have the power, but not everyone necessarily feels empowered. And it's like the idea that every community has um, enough people within it that would spend the time and energy to like tangibly help the homeless community within that region. Um, so it's like an activation basically for, for those people that want to participate in such an act and such a service. Uh, so it'd be like, uh, I'm thinking like a weekend or maybe it'd be like a few, few weekends where a person like gets kind of like trained on how to approach, how to provide help. And then is given like the toolkit that basically a social worker has of like organizations that they can relay people to and, you know, like case by case ways in which they can help which then can help also the further analysis of like where the gaps are and what, what needs there aren't systems for. Got it. Yep. So question for the, uh, for everybody else in the audience, you know, is there anybody here who happens to be a, um, a you know, I know Jennifer, you're in film. Didn't know if you wanted to give any feedback to this process at all and how you would start off with a new documentary project or if there are any um, houseless activists, potentially in the Las Vegas area, or a film editor. I think a film editor could be anywhere, correct? They don't have to be in Vegas, is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Yep. So gee, do you have any feedback about, you know, um, the, the, the creating a NFT based film or, or anything like that, or, you know, how to flesh this sketch your vision out a little bit more? Um, right. No, I think that, I think you're definitely on the right track. I mean, I haven't created a, a documentary NFT yet either, so I'm still I'm on the mission. I'm on the journey right along with everybody else right now. So this is very exciting for me uh, to be a part of. And so yeah, I mean, I'm learning right there along with you, Misha. I think what you're doing, I think the core of any documentary has to be what the heart of it is. And the heart of what you're doing seems to be right on. So, you know, I'm sure that, uh, that you know, once people see what's going on with, with what you're doing, they're just going to want to jump on board right away. Quick question, Misha, what's the working title of this? A uh, working title, uh, Human Hands was like the working Excellent. So everybody just watch this process. You know, I mean, do you have any questions about 
creating your own sketch of your own vision and building your own team. Uh, looks like there's some people. Oh, I have a quick question. Um, because uh, what comes up for me as we're having this discussion, um, is there a space for us? Is there a community, a digital space for us to like pitch projects and like discuss and see who wants to be on board with what? Um, yeah, so the, the digital space that, forgive us for not being perfect yet today, is our Discord group. And our Discord channel is where we're doing, where we're holding all communications because they're gonna be beyond any, you know, the, like, the, the process here, I'll show you Discord because for some of you, you haven't even seen it yet because of technical difficulties. So, so here's Discord and we're envisioning the possibility of, let's see. So sketch your vision, which is here with the green book. This is where each visionary will post their vision to attract other team members. We'll encourage each team leader to create a channel for their teams to interact with individually after the fact. So this is where we're first going to build our teams from. So we're gonna take this, sketch your vision. Let's see, human hands. Share. Copy link, Discord. All right, so we're gonna do this. Misha, what's your last name? You still there, Misha? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, S person, E S person. Misha S person. Let's see, human hands. Team needs pollinator in Las Vegas, houseless community. And technician slash film editor. Maybe also editor. some someone with like um kind of like uh the organizational level connections to the field, like whether government or um NGO. That also no, that yeah, I love that. So pollinator in the Las Las Vegas community, that would also be a pollinator in the um, government NGO space in Las Vegas houseless ecosystem, I guess, or community. Does that make sense? You want to adjust that on all, Misha? I'm not sure if you can see my screen, Misha. Oh, um, yeah, sorry. I keep muting it. Um, yeah, I can't really see it, but uh, it all sounds great so far, and I'm glad to go in and adjust if needed later as well. Excellent. So we, yep. for those of you who can see this, on, under the Sketch Your Vision channel, this is the format we're looking to, 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 to build teams with. And you just state your name first, or I think I put Misha's name because it's going to be posted by me. So I just want to make sure everybody knows who to contact. And then the name and then the team needs after it. And then a link to the document, which is your overview. It should have taken you no more than 25 to 30 minutes to complete. So, okay. and then we, if we have, you know, 60 to 80 of these, we'll be able to go through it. And then just so you're all aware, this also has at the end of it, on the second page, the event overview of what we're doing, how it works, the logistics, um, I have to update some of this stuff. I think some of it's a little outdated, so I'm glad I'm seeing this now because we move fast and break things around here. And then, um, so I'll edit this this blurb a little better, make it tighter for an audience who's 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 potentially a, a team member who's not familiar with what we're up to. And then you can anyone you can invite to the Discord channel, knowing that it's not perfect and that it takes like probably 24 hours. I think it took Sam 24 hours to get on the other day. So. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's just, just part of the game, but anyone come in, you can share this document, build your team. And then the next step will be uh, win-win agreements, which we'll get into in a future module date and time. 
Perfect. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, John, just a yeah. note about the Discord channel. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at yours and I'm looking at mine here. And yeah. under main, I can only see general. Uh, I don't see any of those other channels. So I, I just wonder if maybe there's a delay here in this coming up. Huge delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gave everybody access that was signing on because there was a delay in sign ons. And then I gave everybody access before the breakdown and where everybody got kicked off for general and the document, document, documentary. Um, production channel. I give everybody who has signed up already access to that, but I don't know what's going on in the back end of Discord for how come it's taking long to, to distribute those permissions. Mm. So um, this is, so I'm glad that I have this up right now and everybody can see it because this is what the full Regen FT Discord server looks like. We have rules, we've got announcements, we've got the documentary production, which we spoke about, uh, that was what Gentry spoke about. We've got the schedule master here. We've got polls, which is where we'd like to do that. And, and um, Brett was actually checking in about having access to this channel earlier too. So we're ironing that out. The polls time will be like where we, where we set times for meetings and such, where we can all discuss that here and, 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 and be on the same page. Frequently asked questions, resources. Then in the main, there's general page, suggestions, support, Sketch your vision, win-win agreements, which will be next. Mindbender Art VR Dojo, where you can really get Brooks amazingly talented ear. Marketing our NFTs for highest bids. You know, this is where the business folks are going to congregate. Commands, it's a bots channel. I don't think you'll have access to it. NFT news, what's happening in the world around it. Then the four verticals, decarceration, earth restoration, COVID-19 relief and alleviating homelessness. And then the rogue vertical for the nonconformists. And hey, John, then, yes? I'm uh, sorry, sorry to bug you, but uh, uh, I think I figured out the problem with the Discord. Uh, there's a setting for permissions to allow people to see prior messages. So there's like a checkbox somewhere that will allow you. I checked that. that off at the beginning of the server. If I have to check that off at the at the uh, at the permission st stage of every single one of these uh, channels, I'll do that as well. Um, I had thought that it was all set and ready to go. So, Chip, we'll take that. We'll we'll we'll, we'll circle back on that. So, thank you for that. Um, so let's see. So, there's NFT terminology. There'll be a place for NFT sales tracking. If you're doing VR NFTs, we want to give you an opportunity to see what else is happening where uh, in the NFT landscape, and then the rest of it's for staff. So. I am happy, Daniel, you pointed that out. Thank you very much. And we'll be working on this. I'd say within the next 24 hours, any of you who signed up should have full permissions for um, all the channels that we're starting out with to begin. So, thanks, Edgar. And thank you, Kelly. So uh, how, is there anyone else who wants to go through the process? Or are there any questions that, that need to be answered at this time? I'm just curious if it's possible us to wear more than one. If somebody's speaking, could you get close to the microphone? You're far away. This is Eckhart. I was just wondering if, if it's possible for, or even uh, advantageous, or pro probably less advantageous, to have more than one hat. Like, what, could we be part of the artist and part of the uh, pollinator, or even something different, depending on the needs? Did you say more than one chat or more than one role, Eckhart? Or different role. A different yeah. Role. So, so the so the teams are teams between three and twelve people. So um, there's five specific roles. We just ask that if you 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 try to get as many of the five roles as possible within at least three people on your team. Okay, and those could be shared. Uh, yeah, like like with um, with this Misha's problem right now that he just spoke about. One of the things we uncovered: he needs an activist pollinator. He also needs a government slash NGO pollinator. And they aren't always the same people, you know what I mean? Like I know I know quite a few people with uh, houseless boots in the ground contacts that some have government and NGO contacts, but others just exclusively have the government and NGO contacts. So that's one role broken into two. And sometimes you can have um, one person who fills multiple roles. 
Right. Okay. The other thing I was going to ask, and I think I talked to you about this, was I need to kind of check with my team. But we created what, in fact, is a blueprint for an architectural project where there's a basically a blank slate for building an entire community. Um, can that be rolled into an NFT, um, stylized and made into? I mean, that would be just. I don't even know if anyone's ever done it. But I mean, it's this is going to be based on a real, you know. Thing that's going to be built into a, a, a living and breathing community. Um, is that is that possible? Is that advised against? Yeah, and, and I think we did talk about this, and and you know, just like we had mentioned, I mentioned earlier, was that anything could be turned into an NFT. I've seen the sketches and designs of your architectural firm. The only thing that people advise in the NFT world is it's unreleased material. Because if you have released material that you create an NFT on it, you, the, the potential for having value is, is lower because there's already a value for it in the marketplace. It's already been released. So when you have unreleased material um, that 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 uh, you have full permission to access, then you can create your own value on it. Right. Right. Okay. That makes sense. But you definitely need to get. I think it's John Randall on your team, the architectural drawing gentleman. You need to definitely get his permission to use any of his drawings. And right. you should probably get your entire team's permission and maybe recruit your entire team to be part of this and, and give them a cut of the NF NFT sale because their IP went into it. Right, right. That gets into a little bit of the win-win agreements here. Um, you know, we want this to be, uh, we don't want to try and change the world by exploiting and extracting, you know, the creative process. That would seem to be a wretched way to try to change the world. So we want everybody here that touches a creative process. Like I'll give an example. This weekend I, I, I completed 30 miles of a 50 mile march. My dear friend, Charlie Dice, who's also a fellow friend here in the Berkeley Marina. Uh, Gentry is the producer of this NFT. We're gonna create an NFT of this march. Uh, and also for the houseless community in Marin. I spent a very dark night in Christmas night uh, in a homeless community in a, uh, called Camp Compassion in Nevada, California. And uh, they're, they're in the North Bay. And I just walked through the North Bay through their ecosystem. And I'd like to raise some money for, for folks that are in that, in that space, uh, in that place, uh, in, in that bioregion. So we're gonna create an NFT of this, of this walk. And there's a lot, of, we got a ton of footage. We had GoPros, we had drones. It was a lot of fun. And you know, if we sell the NFT for a good price, we're gonna make sure that we give money to anybody who is in that uh, film. And Charlie spent 20 miles with the with the camera on his chest. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. So, I'm sorry, Dana, do you wanna say something? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Misha here. I'm about to go out, potentially out of service, but I did have one question. Um, uh, so, someone mentioned uh, Brock Pierce. Uh, is he on board? Do we want him on board? So Brock Pierce uh, it would be a target buyer for some of the work that we create. He is okay. not currently on board as we speak. And I know that some people have, have feelings for him, either positive or negative. Um, I think that as a community, um, he'd be a it'd be advantageous to touch move and inspire him to purchase some of this artwork. But yet again, I'm, I'm not speaking for everybody. I'd like, you know, and, and I don't think anybody here can speak for everybody else. Like if somebody here really wants Brock as a buyer, I think they should go out and find avenues and channels to get to Brock to be a buyer. And if other people don't want to be associated with Brock, then, then they can choose with their artwork not to be associated with him. Cool. And I guess one last thing that came up uh, as we we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, the money and like, you know, saying supporting homeless people that are in the project for the with the money, you know, that could also be like part of the further documentation. So it's like something I've been like thinking about is like, let's actively take initiative, change the world and document the entire process and invite people along for the ride as we do it. And just like this constant feedback loop of like, uh, live stream, crowdsourcing actively, changing the world, and then bring people on board to do more of that. Misha, I'm 100% on board with that. Um, we're just doing it for six weeks together. Um, and and we're, we'd love for you to share on your social media channels 
your process and tag it at a regen FT in these six weeks. And if you continue to change the world for after this point in time, you don't have to tag us as regen FT, but we'll be rooting for you and, 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 and loving you along the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So does anybody else want to go through the sketch revision process at all? Or uh, does anybody have any questions? We had basically another break scheduled and then more of this work if necessary. This is the workshop portion of, of, of this introductory session. So, you know, if, if you feel complete, you know, please let us know. And if you also, if you want to dig a little deeper, we can do that as well. I have a question. Yes, Jessica. Uh Hey, um, yes. yeah, I'm curious to know what what people's expectations are for percentages, um, just in general, just the average. I'm just trying to get an idea of numbers. Well, and I, uh, yeah. can I speak specifically to your piece because I'm familiar with what you're where you're posting and where you're giving it and stuff. All right. Yeah. So you you have a piece already completed. You don't have a team putting creative input uh, into that piece. So the percentage right now would be, you know, like you've come on board as a special use case. You're giving 25% to the permaculture action network, which is awesome of whatever sale, however much money we get for the bit of your artwork. Um, I'd say it would be probably best for you to have some business person on your team. And if you don't need a third person because you've already completed the artwork, then that's okay. You know what I mean? We can make an exception. Like we're trying to build teams of three to 12, partly because we want more people to understand this beautiful, incredible, innovative technology that's that's coming forth, that we can create artwork to change the world together. So we're trying to encourage artists to collaborate outside their, their, their zone. But you came on just last minute with an already existing art piece. So you, I would think that if you had a business person, the percentage of typically, you know, in a very different field, in the insurance world, uh, a business person who helps make a sale gets 25% of the sale if they help start to finish the sales process. So um, I would think that if, if you had a business person who was instrumental in the sale, then like, you know what I mean? Then, then, then getting them that money and they're signed on, it could be a range in your written agreement. Like if they, if, 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 if they, yeah, I, I was, it really is dependent on how much work went because you put hours and hours into that art piece, you know? So we don't want you to subsidize somebody else just for the sake of being part of this. We want you to give 25% to the Permaculture Action Network. And we as a team, as the Region FT team need 5% because we have to pay 2.5% to some tech platform. And then we, we're, we're trying to keep a little bit for ourselves to, to, to pay for this journey ourselves. But um, it's really negotiable, you know? And, 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 and you have the negotiating chip that you have a completed artwork. You spent thousands. You've spent many, many hours of your life building and creating. That you're just looking to sell. Yeah, and I'd love to connect with a business marketing person because that's you know I'm learning that, but I'm not that great at it yet. So it would be great to connect. And um, I was just kind of putting it out there if anyone here on the chat happens to be that type uh, and wanted to put say a number, uh, I you know just so that I have that in my mind um but yeah that makes sense the 25 percent or negotiable any any business people want to take a stab and jessica you want to share your piece do you okay sharing your piece in the chat at all or you want to you want to take the screen um, and walk us through your piece a little bit yeah I could, I could make I, you host. i've never done this before <laughs> um so i'm making you host pull it up if you okay. hit share screen in the little green button at the very bottom, yeah, and whenever you're done pulling up your piece, you'll be able to do it. You'll just have to make me host afterwards. Please don't sign out before you do that. Okay, let me, I'm pulling it up. I have to find it, so bear with me. All right, Kyle, thanks, bud. Let's record when we change host too, that's cool. So, so um, isn't recording, uh, recording still continuing? And then also um, the marketing workshops or whatever you're calling them, um, 
are those on Zoom and those are independent of, like, well, I'd love to know more about those because that Great sounds question. really interesting. So we're going to, that's in our schedule document. And yes, everything is gonna be on either, is gonna be, every meeting is gonna be on Zoom, all documentations in Google Docs, and all communication that's text, that's not via email, is going to be in Discord channels. So we will have both marketing uh, masterminds on Zoom, as well as that marketing channel on Discord to continue the conversations beyond just those modules. Cool, that sounds rad. Um, I'm ready to share my screen, am I a host? You're the host and it's the green share your screen button at the very bottom of Zoom. Oh. Thanks, Daniel, I didn't know that. All right, sorry, I have to open assistant. There's some technical difficulties. Mercury and retrograde, we're <laughs> My bad, you guys can do other things for now while I figure this out. No, no, um, is the issue the share screen issue? Yeah, I have to get, like, give Zoom permission and system preferences and I'm trying to figure out where that is. And well, I, I have your piece on Facebook, correct? Right? You sent it to me yesterday? Yeah, you can just put it up yourself if you want. Can you make me host again? Do you know how to do that? No. Okay, so uh, on the... Um, Right hand side is the participant list. Okay. You click on John and Carla, or you put your mouse over John and Carla, and then you uh -huh. hit more, and then under more should be make host. Okay. Now you're the host. Did it work? Uh, let me check. I just was pulling this up. So. Yeah, it says you're the host now. Thank you. There we go. Gorgeous. So you want to tell us a little bit about this piece and, and touch um, and inspire a business person to join your team? Yeah, I started this piece originally as a poster design for the Polish ambassador. And he did a tour a few years ago um, called, I think, what was it called? The Permaculture Action Tour. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, he went on tour all over the country and brought together, in addition to the music that he, the shows that he did, he brought together a bunch of people to take action and make an impact in various ways, like planting gardens or painting murals that have to do with education and just eco-activism. So this art piece was created for that tour. And um, at first, it was a bunch of text where all the butterflies are. But um, when I learned about NFTs, I got really excited and uh, I really wanted to create a piece that could have this kind of message and impact. And I'm really big on the idea of art as a message. And I love the idea of art spreading through NFTs with just getting to the right people who have the funds. And also I like the idea of the secondary sales and just the fact that it can be transferred and that the message could just keep going and going and going. So I wanted to make a piece that represented this vision. So I finished it and it's unreleased um, besides the fact that it was a poster. So nobody in my audience knows about this <laughs> at all. I haven't put it out there. Um, so it's pretty fresh and yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. Super excited, I love it. Um, so what, what are you thinking about? You know what I mean? Like, what do you think about price wise or like, what are you looking for and where to position this? What type of buyer? I know you're an art, you're an art OG. So share with us what you're thinking. Share for the business people who wanna help you and serve you a little bit about the market. So, and then, so maybe they can, they can join your team. Well, so, I mean, obviously I'd love to sell it for a high price, but um, I don't really want to sell it for under say like two ETH, but um, 
we, it depends on what platform we all decide on because when you look at these um, platforms on Tezos or Matic, they're smaller. So I have noticed the price ranges are much smaller also. Uh, it's typically like people sell their work for maybe $30 or something equivalent, and but they'll do additions. They'll do additions of 100 or whatever and just sell them for very low prices. Um, but on the Ethereum blockchains, it seems like, you know, those are where the high sales are. So it really right. just depends. <laughs> so so, so um, just for, for a couple of things I just wanted to highlight that have come up from your wisdom that I don't think everybody else knows. One, NFTs give artists the ability to potentially make a sale, make money on the secondary sale. So there's a woman I know in my network named Aranka Israni, um, who sold a piece for $30,000, a free set of photos for $3,000. And someone, someone, I mean, 30,000, I'm sorry. And then, and then someone in turn flipped them for 3 million and she made no, none of that upside. Where NFTs give the artists, they empower the artists with the opportunity to, to make money in the secondary market. Uh, Jessica, have you heard that people who choose the secondary market option, does that lower the purchase price on average? That was something that I wanted to know about as a business person, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning this alongside you, like gentry sales, you know, so I don't know. Does it lower the, no, um, no, it's just kind of known as part of the deal with NFTs that artists get a royalty percentage and everybody's cool with that, it seems. I think people are really into it, actually, instead of it being a downside. Um, so typically, I think the average percentage for secondary sale royalties for artists is 10%. So, you know, if you sell your NFT to somebody and then they sell it to someone else, the artist gets that percentage, 10%. Or you could set it up to 20%, but most people do 10%. Thank um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the percentage of people do get secondary sales. You know, um, I've noticed that it's either if you're selling something for a really, really, really low price, you'll get those secondary sales, but otherwise you got to be kind of a hot shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's all an experiment. Um, I've been learning a lot, but I'm also just still figuring it out. So. And the second thing I wanted to touch upon that you brought up was about the marketplace, which is really key. You know, I mean, somebody ended up leaving our meeting and then hitting no, who is part of the meeting when we talked about maybe using ETH or maybe not using ETH. So there's a lot of energy and passion around not using ETH because of the CO2, um, CO2 emissions that happen for transaction. Um, oh, did that turn someone off? <laughs> yeah, not yours, not your statement, my statement early on. Oh. So, uh, but what, what happens is, I, I think if we create a white labeled marketplace, or you know, I mean, if, if we if we can find a partner who will just make this an a region NFT experience, this is a once in a lifetime historical historical event. Nobody has ever, from an incubator perspective, made this much social impact art and targeted really wealthy crypto whales the way I think our our marketing strategy is targeting. And so we have the potential to craft a narrative that's unlike anything that's ever come before us. So we, we might, that, that specialness and uniqueness about the talent in this pool might lead us to water, regardless of what marketplace we're on, because we might bring the heavy hitters to the little pool, if you know what I'm saying. So, but this is a conversation we're gonna need to have. And, you know, I mean, because, because there's passion and then some of the passion is, I think sometimes based on uh, not always based on all the facts. So I, I'm, I'm just willing to, to really hash this out with the community and find out what's best for us. Because I think uh, I? the highest impact is best with as long as we offset any emissions. But go ahead. Can I say talking. something? Yeah, who is this? Who's speaking? Hi, I'm Jerome. Hey, and Jerome. Um, I've, been, I've been working in this space a bit for some time now. And the initiatives that I've been involved with have all partnered with uh, an organization called Ariel. Are you familiar with Ariel? I'm not familiar with Ariel. Okay. Ariel is a company that's built a system that uh, handles the carbon offsetting of Ethereum mining. 
Mm. So um, that, you know, due to Ariel and what they've accomplished, the carbon footprint of Ethereum mining is no longer an issue. Thank you. They, yeah, they've sorted that out. So yeah, I, the, the, the organization I was recommending to do that with it was an organization called Nori, which I put in the chat earlier, but now that we've gone off, it might not be there anymore. I'll put it there, we post it in the chat, N-O-R-I.com. Um, N-O-R-I.com. N is in Nancy, O-R-I. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and how do I pronounce your name? Jerome? Is that what I said? Jerome, yeah. Yeah, we, we should definitely take this offline. I would think that a sponsor for, for our, I think that an offset sponsor would we on an Ethereum chain would be a real value add? Do you think that there's the possibility with with this organization you mentioned? What was the name? Sure, I, I'd be more than happy to introduce you to Andreas and the team, and um, maybe even we could set up a call and have a chat about it. Thank you, John. That would be amazing. And then you know, just to let you know, not only would we spend whatever you know all all the money on on getting the art gallery out and food and supplies for people to get to Ephemera. But we'd also have available a 25% um, uh, finder's fee for any business person who helps lead us to getting and securing sponsorships. So we're trying to live this ethos of, of sharing the pie. So we'd love to circle back with you after this call about that. Sounds good. Thank you. Anybody else have any art pieces they want to talk about? Any visions they want to explore while we're here on the, on the call? And there can be spontaneity and 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 the creativity of the collective i could i could share who's speaking i'm sorry my zoom is a little laggy All it's right. okay it's daniel Daniel, what's going on bud hey so actually this has been really great because i've i've gotten some more ideas as listening to different people talk on here about what they're working on and i'm kind of at the the beginning of of the ideation here but um but as you know john and probably other people don't know, I'm running a company called Everflux and we're really just all about ending waste in the world and ending the use of toxic chemicals and regenerating ecosystems. And we make some products to do so, but um, <clears throat> I, I was really inspired by John's idea or and everyone who was involved in coming up with this um, hackathon here to make art around this. And so I'd really just like to make an art piece that kind of envisions what that world could look like without waste, without toxins, where everything is, you know, where, you know, basically, basically our, our eco utopian vision, but, um, you know, something that is, yeah, that is a little bit unique in that sense. And so I've been thinking about like a visual art piece, you know, maybe just a painting or something like that. Um, <clears throat> was kind of inspired. To, this is my my room here. Just um, I had this doorway over here that it, it just had some ugly foam behind it when I moved in, and so I just put this this picture of a tree in there, and it's kind of fun because it's like looking through a gateway into another world as I see it. <laughs> so something something along those lines, but that's that's about as far as I've gotten so far. So I'm I'm looking for collaborators. Wow. So just to let you know, um, Brooke Einbender's work is all about doors. I, I missed her presentation, so I don't know if you, you did you did she touch upon the door work that she's doing? Uh, you know, I I saw part. I was preoccupied, but I saw part of what she was she was doing. Check out her her Mindbender art website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and doors is a gate where like she envisions multiple. Um, virtual reality experiences behind real world doors that she's finding and refurbishing and, and making quite beautiful so oh, the wow. fact that you just it's, <laughs> it's in the collective here where you know g and i and, and claire can introduce you but we just i want you to first see what she's doing um mm -hmm. and and see if there's the potential to plug you in because i love what the way i love what the way you took that hack for earth 1.0 and ran with it um mm -hmm. i love your creative mind man and, and i look forward to whatever team you end up uh uh, touching movement inspired to join you yeah cool thanks did, did you say that was uh it was brooke who was doing brooke, that brooke einbender yeah she's one email that everybody should have access to but please don't blow her up you know what i mean but if, if, if you're looking at her work and, and 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 getting value from it and have questions about vr in particular 
uh, please reach out. Cool. So what were the questions you had about that door vision, this, this thing about looking through? Was, was there any feedback you wanted to get from the community or, and, and where would the money go for the 25%? The, would it go to one of your Everflux visions, one of your uh, philanthropy from your, from your entrepreneurial endeavors? Tell us more. <laughs> Yeah, so so one of one of the things we're trying to do here is um, rather than just sell product products, we're trying to educate people about ways of of growing food and growing medicine that's non toxic and that's regenerative at the same time. And so, um, and we actually. So we, we charge for these educational programs, but we'd like to have like a scholarship fund for people who can't afford them. And <clears throat> so that's that's what I was thinking about for the donation is to a scholarship fund. Amazing. So scholarship fund, so this is the thing, you know, Daniel's already an earth restorer through and through in his bones. So if Daniel makes earth restoration artwork and it filters back to your earth restoration entrepreneurial endeavors, that's what we're here for. We really promote that kind of action because we want you to be supported because if you're standing on firm legs, the earth will be in a better position. So um, rock on with that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So I am, you know, I'm looking for collaborators, especially on the art side of things. So I'd love to get in touch with Brooke or anybody else, um, you know, who is an artist, who's a designer and then we we might need somebody on the team also who is i mean i i could potentially fill the business person role but i but we might might do well with uh somebody who knows the market a little better or somebody who's a pollinator so yeah yeah so the process of you know of team building is not just the people the, the folks who are here which is amazing everybody who has showed up here um the process we're creating with this with this reach out and the simple heuristic, simple languaging is we want you to reach out to your network, to people you know. And you are right, you're the visionary in this case. And you are an entrepreneur at heart and, and you're great at making the business thing happen. But I think it, you'll be better served if you recruit someone with either who understands the art, NFT art markets now or who has business chops and wants to learn it. And wants to join your team for that. I think you'd be served by one or the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Does anybody have any feedback for Daniel or any artists want to jump on and, and help make that a reality? Oh. Yeah. I mean, just Hello. freaking mind-blowing yes. talent that we've had sharing on this, uh, this call so far. Uh, yeah, Daniel, huge fan of your work. Uh, same goes for you, Jessica. And Misha, what an awesome vision, man. Um, I think that what we've been going through as we get into the nitty gritty and really get down to, you know, um, this iteration process that we'll all be going through and what, what we need to thrive and succeed and, and, you know, sell some serious art at the end of the day. Um, this is a really effective little preview of, of what we'll be doing uh, collectively. And, you know, thank God we also have like, a, you know, this iterative design process um, so yeah, Daniel, thank you for what you're doing with your life. Um, I think we can bring an, an extra element to it. Uh, and John, thank you for, for walking us through, uh, these fascinating, you know, three at this point examples. Anytime, Sam, should we move into Q and A or I was just in the flow with, with, with everybody who was saying yes. So I'm sorry if I was off time. No, no, no. Uh, we're, we're doing fine on time. Um, we've got another 10 minutes. And I, you know, I think actually at this point, it might, it might make the most sense to, to um, move the specific conversations about the projects offline uh, and open the floor to everyone who's been so gracious and patient and uh, sharing space with us over the last few hours. Um, and um, yeah, anyone, whether it's, uh, I guess questions would come first. And then if people want to elaborate on their vision, we'll keep the, the meeting floor open um, past seven, past our, our end time. So yeah, any questions? I have a question that I kind of hesitate to ask. I mean, I, I don't worry about it, but I mean, there's so much kind of on, there's, I mean, there's, there's no regulatory body per se on, on, Bit, on Bitcoin, right? And so we really, we're in a pioneering territory 
of, but I don't think we have to worry about someone losing money that's claimed or lawsuits or anything like that, right? I mean, I'm just, just, I'm just to share, you know, we, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty still. So, I mean, um, we'll do the best we can, of course, but we're hoping there's, there's no international regulatory body that I'm aware of. Do we, do we is that a concern at all or? Hmm. Edgar, great question. So most NFT platforms have anti-money laundering rules built into them. And we're definitely going to look for that for a for a um, business partner, for sure. Firstly. Secondly, you know, I mean, um, um, you know, there's two schools of thought. And, and I'm just, you know, one is the highest bidder. I mean, obviously, we're not going to do any, we're not, we're, we're not going to facilitate anything negative. You know, we're here to be on the up and up and in compliance. Um, I know when you sell a financial security, you have AML and KYC. For those of you who don't know, that's anti-money laundering and know your customer rules. But those are typically things that are going to come in from our, our, our NFT marketplace partners. Uh, we're the community partner. So um, as far as we go, we, we are going to sell art to whoever is touched, moved, and inspired to buy the art. And if, you know, if you're extra concerned, beyond just the rule of the law and the AML rules, and you want to ask your bidders extra questions, you're 100% you're uh, uh, empowered to do so. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's just no, you know what I mean? So so like where there's a level of scrutiny that's legally required, and if you want extra scrutiny, you're more than welcome to bring that. Okay, so that is the, the KYC that the other shows are required already. So that is working in our favor. So, so, so to be 100% honest, when you sell a security, you 100% have to have AML and KYC. So if you're Coinbase, you need to have it, or if you're Kraken, places that sell tokens and securities need to know who their customers are in the United States. Okay. NFT marketplaces, I'm not sure if they require it at this moment in time. Okay. I know that we have identified as an internal team, a preference for a marketplace that has AML, K, uh, has AML and KYC, um, but we are going to be in compliance with the United States law 100%. Um, and if that's not a requirement by the US, United States law, we're gonna to talk to the community about it and we're gonna make the decision together. Got it, fair enough. So, but we don't individually have to be concerned or working together in that spirit. We don't have to go do all our own due diligence or just, doing what ordinary citizens in the marketplace would, would want to be involved with. It's, it's just without having to do a lot of search on our own, we're, we're, we've got that foundation wrong. Yeah, we're gonna be in compliance with US law and our signed win-win agreements are gonna ensure that all participants are in compliance with US law. And if anyone's out of compliance with the, with the US law, uh, they are in breach of our contract. Uh, which, like I said, will be signed by June 23rd. So that's 100% the case. That said, if KYC and AML are not U.S. law requirements for NFT marketplaces, and some people want that as a piece, we're going to have to talk about what our NFT partners, what our NFT marketplace partners are going to, what the requirements should and should not be. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a pending question, and it's an important one. So thank you for bringing that off. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, who is this speaking? Because I'm sorry, this Zoom again. This is Athena. Hey, Athena. Hi there. Um, thank you so much for bringing this together and so timely and needed and happy to be here and uh, see where it can go. So yeah, my gratitude. And I'm curious if there's a, like a deck um, that kind of out, lays out what Regen NFT is. Um, and if, because I, I heard what you were saying about getting some sponsorships and it just kind of rang some light bulbs in my head of people that could be in support of this and how could I communicate it to them? So if there's any kind of, yeah, material like that, uh, I'd be interested to see it and perhaps forward it along. So, Rocco, with that, uh, we will 
host, we will get that to you within 24 hours, Athena. And we also oh, want to open it up to the community. I was sharing a portion of the deck for my presentation, but because I was on um, dear Carla's computer, not mine, I was I had technical difficulties and wasn't able to do so. So I, I, I will share the complete deck with you in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we also want to open it up to the community to make it better. Because if we have a, because okay. the sponsorship we're looking for is for the 48 foot trawler vessel that we want to turn into the mobile crypto art gallery that goes to meet the whales, if you will. The whales are the crypto wealthy for those of you who don't know. So uh, it's in all of our best interest to have this. And we can definitely share with you the deck and improve the deck according to community feedback for sure. Right, and also of course Excellent. open to sponsorships. Thank you so much. Many, many different levels. Athena, so awesome to see you. And yeah, um, if for those you know, if you have people in your network who are interested, we've got a, a website up, regionft.net. We have uh, a beautiful uh, one pager that summarizes the mission, the the process, the outcome, uh, and then we have this deck that is ready to go. And uh, as John mentioned, is you know. Uh, going to be iterated even further to target particular uh, sponsors, funding sources, et cetera. So yeah, ton of written materials that'll go out in an email um, either the end of end of the night tonight or uh, early tomorrow. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Are you still you. in Maui? I <laughs> am. I live here now. Amazing. Ahana ho, baby. <laughs> Oh, any further questions, comments? We've got three minutes before the act, the official close of uh, this afternoon, this evening's call. Is, is, uh, is this, this, this Discord channel, it's, it's kind of new to me. Is, is, the, is this uh, in, in place of, I guess, what do you call Slack channel? I don't use Slack, but is this 24-7? Uh, we can communicate with each other, or is it just for Defined purposes. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the live channel, Eckert. Thanks for asking. Um, and that'll yeah be moderated multiple times a day. You know, with with uh, one of the team members, and then of course everyone uh, who's participating is welcome to conduct conversations there yeah, at any hour of the day. So direct uh, communication with an individual. Or is it generally to the Yeah, I mean it's up to you. There there will there are channels that will and, and as we break off into teams, you know, there will be team channels. Um, that Discord usefully has the option for voice chats, um, for video chats, and but principally it's like what you were said. It's like it's the replacement for the Slack channels, just a little bit more adaptable, a little bit more open source. Thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you, Sam and Gentry for being brothers for years and and saying yes to this journey. Thank you, Carla, for starting us off with embodiment and the feminine. Thank you, Claire, for your 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 divine channel and blessing us with it with that sound sound blessing. And thank you, Brooke. I think you're gone. And thank you, everybody who, who asked questions and shared their vision. And just really, really, I'm, I'm gratefully humbled by by all the talent that's saying yes to this. And you're in good company. There was, I think, at, at the peak, there was about uh, close to 40 people on the call, and we've got about 60 more signed up. Um, you know, these are a really amazing group of artists. I'm so grateful to uh, to be working with all of you. You know, and we're, we're going to do everything in our power to see this all the way through to the end. This is not going to fizzle out. This is, you know, um, just a powerful vehicle to... Uh, realize individual dreams, collective dreams, and and to really make a positive impact. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, this is only the beginning. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and we'll be in contact shortly. Thank you for your patience around the, the Discord channel. You should Within 24 hours, you should have complete access. And um, we just, we're, we're really look forward to moving the needle for social transformation together. Yay.